What was it like stepping into this world of contain containment? Oh, the containment world. I mean, let's start with the fact that it's helmed by the amazing Julie Pleck, who has changed my life recently, not with one phone call, but two, having worked with her for six episodes on the originals. To know, as, from an actor's standpoint, what it was going to be like to work on one of her projects, because the culture gets created from the top down, and she really carefully curates the people she puts together. And we have this, it's a phenomenal chemistry, which is painfully ironic considering our characters are torn apart and hardly ever get to interact. As an ensemble, it's, it's an extraordinary energy when we're put together in the same room. Um, and then working on this particular project, it was, it was the golden child of pilot season. Everyone loved it. They said it was the best written thing and, and so cast and crew alike, everyone wanted to be involved. I, it was a dream come true for me that everything managed to align for me, that I was cast in it in the right place at the right time, that it got picked up, that I got picked up with it because there's always a chance of being fired. And the fact that Julie, and because of the CW, they were able to take a different direction with the character. So it's a C-dub, so everyone's running a little bit younger than, <laughs> than it, perhaps in reality. Um, and they're taking it to a different direction now, so we'll get to really develop the layers of this character, and that's, that's the juice for me, is that you know that there's a mystery there, there's depth and layers to the person, and that there's going to be plenty of opportunities to explore who that person is. How is dealing with a virus, a fake virus on this show, impacted how you go about your regular day-to-day -day life with Purell or washing hands? Oh, my hands have definitely aged prematurely because I washed so excessively for the first few sort of weeks after filming the pilot and during. Um, I taught my kids, you know, we would really talk about the hand washing thing and then, you know, we had a couple of weird things spreading around their school and I was like, listen guys, we've got to contain this and I actually sort of became like my character in a small, like the microcosm of our school and said, I'm going to keep my kids out of school because I think they might be infected. It was hilarious, but I knew exactly what to do. I took it for the team. I was like, you know, I'm going to, you know, keep them back until we're sure that everything's okay. Um, but it's, and you, I mean, you say fake virus, but this is absolutely, this is so realistic. This is exactly how viruses mutate. You know, at one point they go from just being an avian flu or a virus to being, you know, human, human to human transmissible. And it's terrifying and fascinating to base the show in Atlanta where we as an audience and as actors can relate much more to the content. It's not as if we're shooting some show in space where suddenly everyone becomes zombies. This is very real, this can very much happen and that was made very clear to us by the professionals from the CDC that we consulted with. Having worked on video games in the past, what would the video game version of this TV show be? Interesting. They'd probably, people would probably be looking for that zombie element to start sort of creeping in. You know, you'd expect at some point that you could take it to a zombie level. But it would probably be like The Last of Us, I guess, in the sense that it's sort of more relationship based and post apocalyptic. And um, it would be, I think it would be more about, it, yeah, exploring environments and what happens to them and how things change and mutate without the need for a supernatural element. What are your thoughts about how far games have come? I cannot believe how much the technology has advanced in the last even seven years because from the first motion capture experience I had to what I've been doing lately, I've done a, I'm doing a top secret game that I am not allowed to talk about. It's being released sometime in 2016. Such an exciting game to be part of. The technology blows my mind that you, I mean, you used to get a rudimentary depiction in real time, sort of like a bad stick figure that would fall apart on the screen as it sort of lost its ability to kind of render you. And you would sort of see what you were doing in time and space in the volume. Now, they've got an almost beautifully rendered depiction of your character with costume as you're moving around in the suit with the balls on up on the screen relating to the other characters in the virtual environment and once they've captured it with all the ca cameras on the volume they then have this thing that I call like the Captain Nemo wheel where they can walk around with this virtual... I remember as a kid there was a show where she would look through a magic mirror and pretend to see children in the audience and call out their name if you wrote into her and said please say my name. 
it's kind of like Miss Helena's magic window where you pass it around on the volume without anyone else around anymore. So with all the data that's been captured on the days you've been filming, you set it up and you can point it anywhere in the volume and it will show you what was captured and where everyone was so that you can make selections as a director so that you've got some editing choices locked down because otherwise you've got too many angles to choose from. But to be able to do that and pick up, it's like ghosts. It just, it spins, it spins me out so much I can barely articulate it. So yes, in terms of technology and where it's got to and where it's going, I've had a sample of it here, putting on some of the virtual gla It's, I mean, I don't know if my little brain can take it, really.